When God is on your side, who precisely is on the other side? That's the question that's addressed in this morning's text from the fourth chapter of the Gospel of Luke. The story takes place early in Jesus' ministry. In fact, it's pretty much at the outset of it. He's recently spent many days in the wilderness battling temptation, and he's come out of it as the victor. And so he returns to Galilee, teaching in the synagogues. And there must be something very special, something very new and fresh about his message because we read that he is praised by everyone. Things are looking good for Jesus. But just when everything seems to be going well, he goes and picks a fight. He chooses a text from Isaiah as his sermon text, the one that said he had been appointed by God to preach the good news to the poor. He had been sent to proclaim release to the captives and to free the oppressed. This sounded real good to the audience because that pretty much described them as far as they could tell. They were certainly oppressed by the Roman government. They were primed and ready to hear a message about deliverance. But that's when Jesus dropped the bomb. That's when Jesus made it clear that he wasn't talking about them. He was talking about the people on the other side of the line. And he does it with a couple of carefully chosen sermon illustrations. He reminded the listeners of a story that took place during a famine many years ago. And then in the midst of that famine, God sent the prophet Elijah who would give to a widow who would give him refuge from the evil queen Jezebel. And in return, Elijah performed a miracle so that he and the widow and her son would never run out of food despite the famine. But the twist to the story is the widow was a Gentile, not a Jew. Jesus reminds his listeners that there were plenty of widows in Israel, but Elijah was sent to a Gentile widow, and God blessed that woman instead. And just in case there were some people who might not have caught what he was trying to say, Jesus followed up with another story that everyone would have been familiar with. It was the story of how another prophet, the prophet Elisha, was sent to a Syrian leper named Naaman, another Gentile. And God, working through Elisha, cured Naaman of his leprosy. Jesus reminds his listeners that even though there were plenty of lepers in Israel, God chose instead a Gentile to be cured and to consequently manifest God's glory. <coughs> For the Jewish audience to whom Jesus preached, a line had been drawn between Jewish people and Gentiles. And Jesus' message to them was that any time we draw a line between us and someone else, we will discover that God is on the other side. I want to make sure you heard that, so I'm going to repeat it. Any time we draw a line between us and someone else, we will discover that God is on the other side. In first century Palestine, that line was drawn between Jews and Gentiles. But today we found many more ways to draw lines. The church has found many more ways to separate the children of God from each other. It has drawn lines between the LGBT community and the heterosexual community. There are lines between those who are pro-choice and those who are pro-life. There are lines between conservative thinking Christians and liberal thinking Christians. And the point Jesus was making is that God doesn't approve of lines. 
those lines we see all over the map that separate one country from another, they don't really exist. God doesn't see them. They're imaginary. The lines that we may draw are simply our futile attempts at making sure we're on the inside. But if we're on the inside, then the question for you and me today is, who is on the outside?